Today's guest is an actor, musician, Broadway star, and maybe best known for being an original member of Bravo Network's TV show, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Uh, but today he is on the podcast because he is also an exotic pet keeper and enthusiast, and he shares his love and appreciation for these animals with his massive audience. So I want to welcome to the show today, Jay Rodriguez. Hi, Richard. Uh, first <laughs> hey, thank of all, thanks, you. For, thanks for having me on. This is so surreal. You know, I, as you mentioned, I, I work in entertainment and I'm around a lot of celebrities all the time, but I, I, I feel like I'm I'm talking to the king of tarantulas. I've been following your channel <laughs> for a while now and it really got me through the pandemic and I discovered you because of a lot of aquariums and YouTube suggests other channels. At first, to be honest, I was really like, this guy is wild, you have a big personality. And so I was watching for your personality, but in the process, I started really um, becoming less afraid of the idea of tarantulas, not that I wanted to keep them. And, uh, and then over time, you know, I, it just, you would use specific words like never threat prosed at me or rarely kicked hairs. When you use the word <laughs> defensive, I'm like, nope, that's not one for me. Um, but anyway, I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm new to the hobby, but like many people who are new to the hobby, I did a ton of research before I was even comfortable and started small and, and got to where I am today. So when, when did it begin for you? Uh, you mentioned yeah. during... The, the pandemic. Kind but. of during the pandemic, I, I think what it was, was, was um, you know, I think a lot of us got really introspective about the things that matter to us um, during the pandemic and um, were determined to kind of live a more full life when we got the chance to. And for me, that meant kind of tackling a lot of the things I was very fearful of, spiders and big bodies of water specifically. It's those things that'll eat you in a pond. Tarantula scene, and, and I don't like, I'm not I guess I'm kind of assuming I know a little bit about your lifestyle, but you know, doing a lot of these like TV shows and movies and stuff like that, I'm sure you're in and out and sometimes gone for days or weeks at a time. So tarantulas seem like the type of pet that would be very conducive to that type of lifestyle because they little don't require daily care. I would um, have had what, this hobby sooner then. But what do like your friends and coworkers and stuff like that think about the fact that you keep tarantulas? Fascinated want to see all the pictures and videos. I found that when people come into the home, they start fearful and then they're like, the nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, it's actually really cute. Is it weird that I'm saying it's cute? Um, <laughs> it's always in that order. And then the more friends that I've had over who have gotten used to the idea, then they, and you know, I have them in my office and my rule of thumb is if it doesn't fit on the two shelving units, like it can't come in the house. So I'm almost at capacity. Thank God for stackable ones. Yeah, thanks Tarantula Collective and uh, and turning me on to Tarantula Cribs. That was like, that was the helpful tip. But no, I think people really kind of at first are a little surprised. But when I posted a picture the other day, I'd gotten an Arizona blonde off Nate and I, and I posted a video or something. People were like, the DMs were, nope, never, uh-uh. And I was like, it's actually mine. They're like, really? And they get curious. <laughs> so like, I think it sparks curiosity. I think if, specifically because they're under my care, I just don't seem like the kind of person who would care for something so dangerous. And I think that if they're like, well, if he can do it, you know, there's gotta be something that I'm missing. Yeah, I get uh, talking to Tarantula Cat like, on, almost on a daily basis. And she'll mention she's heading to the pet store. And I tease her. I'm like, you're, what are you going to get? <laughs> like, I know you're coming back with a tarantula I, or a frog or something. I love her. And I have her little Wednesday spider that she had um, uh, for sale. Nice. I, I'm obs I, I, She was one of the ones I followed in originally because I could not believe this woman kept spiders in her bedroom. When she said that, I was like, what in her? Richard puts it in the bed. <laughs> How she? But how is she gonna sleep? There's gonna, and then does she hear like my brain could not compute yeah. that that was even happening? I think one of the things that you know, I always say this as an actor, like I can go into a room with guys who are more built, more credits, whatever, whatever. People are attracted 
to your essence, to kind of the uniqueness that makes you you. So when you were growing up and everyone always told you, be yourself, the mm -hmm. reason for that is because your authenticity and you're, you're not conforming and just being a prototype of everyone else is what makes you interesting, is what makes you memorable and, and makes people uh, want to be around you. And so I found Kat so interesting that I just started following her. And I, I think I was very surprised that this, this cute little woman was like doing all this kind of <laughs> dangerous tarantula stuff in my mind at the time, you know, and I couldn't understand it, but I, I learned how to, you know, build an enclosure and the parameters for substrate. I mean, I probably would have been one of those people with like an inch of substrate had I not known, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm like, I wish y'all lived closer. I'd be like, I'd be able to <laughs> spider sit whenever you need. Yeah, that would be very cool. Interesting is a good way to describe her. I like that term. <laughs> yes. I think if I had a house, it would be really different. I think I would have what I've wanted, which was snakes. I started watching Snake Discovery like everyone else. And um, obviously Adam's Wicked Reptiles. Uh, Wicked, Wise guy, huh? Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. That's hard to say. <laughs> so I really do want like a ball python or some of this. But I just, at this point, I'm like, I think right now for my lifestyle, this is the max that I can handle. And that it's a conversation you share in a lot of your videos as well, making sure that you stay within the realm of making sure everything can get the optimal care with the amount of yeah. time you have. And I've tested the theory because it's been when I've been in town and when I haven't been in town. And so now I have a system going where everything is, I have sitters for this, or I have a person that feels more comfortable with this. And it's been pretty easy to kind of make that happen without complete disrupting my life or neglecting the animals. While you're talking about that, you mentioned before we started recording, you were doing a Judd Apatow movie. Is that yes? So the the trailer just dropped. It's called Bros. It is the first gay rom com, basically. So think Bridesmaids, think any of those kind of movies that he's ever produced. It's the same vibe that just happens to center around a gay couple, and the entire cast is LGBT, which is great because it's never happened. But most importantly, he flipped the script. So for a long time in Hollywood, there was a lot of bias. Uh, if you were out, there were certain roles that were for you, generally stereotypical gay or whatever. And if you even could convincingly play a straight person, there was there was hesitation about hiring you. And this movie completely got rid of all of that. They just hired people who just slayed the role regardless of how they identify or who they choose to love. And it's Billy Eichner co-wrote it with uh, the director, Nicholas Stoller, who, you know, wrote Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Get Him to the Greet and directed those. And I, this is my first lead in a major motion picture. And I play a bro -y, hunter gamer type guy and i think people were shocked to hear it and i'm like you do understand i had to go to high school in the 90s right <laughs> like there was years of practicing for this part um yeah just from a pure safety issue back then and so to be in this cast of like something that's momentous i got to be in the first all out gay cast with queer eye uh, in television history and now the first all lgbtq film if for a major studio to make it was massive and it, it's september 30th and generally speaking there's like weekends that are like hot spot weekends for big movies it's already mm -hmm. in a bunch of must see lists uh and there's a there's a trailer i think it's a not safe for work trailer because it is against <laughs> very bright bridesmaids and it's you know how bridesmaids open with that comedic mm -hmm. sex scene there's a yeah. lot of those kind of funny moments. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's also thought provoking and funny and touching. And yeah, I loved doing it. It was a shock. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, after I've been doing this, you know, acting professionally since 1997, my first job was in Rent on Broadway. And, uh, and then Queer Eye kind of introduced me to the world on this global platform. And it was so, Big and I had you know the cover of Vanity Fair or like a cover of Entertainment Weekly or doing Oprah, all these other things that seemed big. And then I left the show and when I transitioned back to acting, there was a lot of well, you were on a reality show, so there's no room for you. You just want to act. I'm like, wait, I have this whole pedigree of work before that didn't matter. And so it was a yeah. real struggle. So I pulled when I found out I booked this, I pulled over and I, I cried. And I'm not really a, I'm not a very emotional person in that direction. And I understand the importance of it, but also like I was really thankful that that Billy Eichner, Nick, and um, Judd Apatow saw the importance of the work. And they even pulled me aside and they're like, just you know, hundreds of guys read for this role and within the first couple lines we're like that's him that's him <laughs> and uh yeah and i play like billy's billy's love interest straight bro -y friend it was a really cool experience i'm excited for people to see it and today the trailer just dropped so when you're when you're filming movies like that does it make it difficult you know to, to be able to take care of your pets while you know while you're busy on set or do you ever bring any tarantulas or anything into your trailer and, and keep them there <laughs> 
<laughs> um, now you give me ideas. Um, <laughs> I no. So what I've done in the past is I've made videos, a la Richard style, at a, a la Tarantula Collective, that are very easy to follow. And then what I have people do is, first of all, a when you're working on a project like that, you know, you're being paid, so it's only fair. I, I wouldn't ask a friend to do it for free. So someone has a financial incentive to take good care of the animals. And then what I do is basically like I have them do it with me. So if it's feeding day. I will have them do all the feedings that are necessary on a feeding day with me just supervising and not saying anything and just we can kind of and it usually goes like a dream and easy. Sometimes it's small things that get forgotten about, like they'll forget to feed the crickets or the dubia roaches, right? So like small things like that. But then I just fix that by putting neon sign. Every single enclosure has a postcard care sheet underneath it poking mm. out. So if you ever in question, and it's almost like a sign out form, last fed last molted it's all on there and i'm super religious about that thankfully um you just partnered with that great app so arachnophiles so now i yeah. can i don't have to use that but it's been really helpful like i haven't brought anything with me my dog will come if it's more than two weeks but even then like it, it depends because i have to like make sure that also i have a friend who has a house and she's like i have two dogs already it's better for him to be playing all day than to be in a hotel room all day so yeah. there's there's small stuff I, I try to consider but yeah if i had my listen i remember i remember hillary swank had like a parrot a bunny and a dog i could be mistaken about the parrot but it was definitely a bunny a dog and and she would bring them in her trailer on set and she would travel with them because she could and she wanted to and because she was an oscar award-winning actress and and why not like really why not mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty big trailer when you're that level um and so <laughs> you know like i feel like there shouldn't be a distinction between the care we have for a dog versus the, the care I, I mean you shouldn't disrespect so, how attached someone is or how much they love their spider because it's something you fear. But Richard, yeah. thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do. And thank you for making spiders less scary. This is a huge honor to be here. I, I, I'm i I'm a member of your Patreon. I like fly oh, to your videos you. and, and I try to tell as many people as possible. And mark my words, I really think we need to make this show. This uh, Queer Eye meets uh, Tarantula Collective moment. Go house to house across the nation and help people with their exotic pets. That would be awesome. I would love that. Just, just <laughs> I, think, I think people would enjoy that. Let's that would get be get Andy cool. Cohen on the line. Maybe one of the housewives wants a tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have like a lot of wasps kind of their little like a hornet's nest or whatever like we oh. have those like like on the sides of buildings and i'm like I thought you no, were talking no. about white anglo-saxons oh no <laughs> richard <laughs> get like me in, in my building <laughs> i mean Whoa. i probably do but i i very much adore them